Hi folks, this is Rob, VK3BVW with the Mount Evelyn DX Report. Uh, this time we're going to replace a filter in the R5000. The filter that comes with it, the stock standard filter, is a very poor filter. Uh, it has a poor quality of the sound, uh, it has a poor shape to the, the way it filters, in fact I don't even know what the shape is. And I don't really know why they put such a poor filter in the unit to start off with. So we're going to uh, replace that as soon as we can. I'm really keen to put a new filter in there. So why is it important to have a range of filters at your fingertips? Well, you're going to find that adding different filters of different bandwidths is, is going to help you separate the signals in crowded uh, parts of the, the short wave band. So the smaller the bandwidth, the less interference you're going to have from signals on adjacent frequencies. In addition, a good quality filter is going to give you a much better audio quality on the signal. And the nice thing about the R5000 is that it's got uh, room for optional filters, so you can uh, add these filters as you go, and depending on the sort, of, the sort of listening that you do, whether it's mainly AM broadcast stations, or whether you're going to be doing a lot of SSB or um, CW work. So you can choose different filters depending on the mode that you're using at the time. On the front panel you can see there's a setting for W, for wide, M1 and M2, and N, which is the narrow setting. There's also an auto setting which uh, has a default setting depending on which mode you're using. This little diagram comes out of the receiver's service manual and it describes the way the filters are set up. In previous versions of the Kenwood uh, they were, uh, the filters were set in parallel but uh, in the R5000 it's set in series. The service manual goes on to say that filters with pass bands wider than the desired receiving bandwidth all pass the signal without attenuating it. The width of the pass band is determined by the narrowest filter used. The other filters do not cause any change or undesirable effects. At offsets of greater than a few kilohertz, however, the attenuation of each filter is added in. So if you look at the bottom illustration there, figure 3.2, what we have in this receiver on the bench is the fairly poor 6 kilohertz AM filter, and we have then quite a good SSB 2.4 kilohertz filter. We don't have any other filters installed in there so the M1 and the N setting on the control in the front panel uh, does not uh, work because there's no filters installed in that yet. So what we're going to do today is change out the 6 kilohertz AM filter and put a better filter in there. Now Kenwood used to make a range of these filters for this receiver. I don't know whether those are still available. But the one I've chosen comes from the International Radio Corporation, also known as INRAD, and uh, this is a company that's been around for many years and supplies a range of filters to lots of different, uh, uh, for lots of different rigs. For AM use, INRAD make two filters. Uh, one's a 6 kHz and the other one's a 4 kHz filter. I went for the, the narrower filter, the 4 kHz one, because uh, being a DXer, more than a shortwave listener, I'm more interested in uh, really uh, separating out the uh, stations from uh, adjacent interfering stations. So that was the one I, I went for. I mean, it's fairly pricey at $130 there. It's, uh, it's, it's not cheap. From their website, here's a printout of the 4 kilohertz filter, a shape factor of 1.5 or 1.6. Uh, looks really good. So with the top cover off, we can see the, where the filters go. There's just the AM and SSB filter there. And that's the offending AM filter that we want to get rid of. It's got two screws, one on each end, and we unscrew those. Rip out the old filter, throw it away, and you can see there where the filter used to be. Now the only thing that came in the box with the filter was this funny little bit of paper which uh, simply said cut off the last two pins flush to the white block 
These are ground pins and are not necessary even for the Kenwood filter. So I don't know what they meant by even for the Kenwood filter. So uh, that's what we duly did. We cut those uh, two pins off and then we were able to uh, grab the filter and uh, insert it in place there in the circuit board. I should mention that they have two types of 4 kilohertz filter. One is a wired inversion, which is uh, like that uh, Kenwood SSB filter there on the side. You've got to actually wired into the board. Uh, and then the other type, which is the one I got, is uh, simply a plug-in type there, and the pins go into those white blocks. You've got to line those up a bit, a bit of juggling around to get that in. You push that down, screw it all up again, and you're ready to go. Job done. So that's it for this part three of the R5000 restoration. There's more videos to come, so thanks for watching. See you again soon.